Good to see everybody here. Um, my name is Ken Budd. I'm the Network Operations Manager here at uh, Park Region Autotail Telecom. I just want to say thanks. I, I mean, this weather is, I mean, you couldn't ask for a nicer day. You know, when we looked at, we were kind of worried. If it, When we're done, if you want to take a look at the inside here, it is so clean. We could, I mean, it's, it's really awesome. So good job, everybody. Uh, I, I do want to say uh, for everybody that, that helped put this together uh, for this real special occasion, uh, I want to say kudos to you, uh, especially Ashley, um, who over, she's our marketing department, literally our marketing department. And she has done such a fantastic job. So thank you. There's most of the faces here. There's been a lot of time and effort put into this project. Um, I think we started this off uh, talking about this two years ago, three, three years ago. And so this is really three years in the making. And it's, it's just such a great occasion where we can all come here and celebrate uh, a groundbreaking for bringing more fiber into the Fergus Falls area. So I'm going to, I'm going to call up our leader, uh, Dave Bickett, our CEO, to uh, to go ahead and welcome everybody. Well, thanks, Dan. It is a nice day, and we did start this project three years ago, um, and it was very collaborative. We worked with the county extensively on it in the beginning. Uh, the two of us trying to figure out how we might be able to make this happen. Uh, we were successful in doing that. And then we were able to reach out to our partners, uh, the townships that are also involved in this, to get them involved. And they were all extremely excited as well as we, as well as ourselves. And without all their help, we wouldn't be standing here today making this happen. So I do want to welcome everybody here. And I also want to appreciate and thank everybody that did come today. We have a lot of our partners here in front of us today and uh, to celebrate this big occasion. You know, one of the things, if COVID taught us anything, is that internet is no longer just email and surfing the web. Uh, it connects us in so many different ways and, in, and in enriches our lives daily. It, it truly is the next utility um, that's being rolled out. And we're so glad to be part of that and have such great partners uh, in order to make that happen. So some of the things that I wanted to read off to you that, you know, as I was just brainstorming of some of the things that broadband has changed our lives that we don't really even think about anymore. But if you take a look at it from a business standpoint, you know, cloud storage and cloud computing. I mean, a lot of things are happening today with cash registers, uh, with, with uh, credit card validations, with just keeping your data secure offline so that if something happened, God forbid, to your business, that you don't lose everything. It's essential for that. Uh, security and monitoring, inner office connectivity, Think about advertising and customer reach out. I mean, what you can do with a broadband connection and e-commerce with extending your business beyond your local scope. It truly is a global market now for anyone that wants to pick up the ball and move it forward. So it enables a lot of things that we didn't have access to before. And expanding those work from home opportunities, which allows you to move away from brick and mortar and concentrating and getting the most talented staff that you can to grow your business and they don't have to be physically located. Now I will tell you here in our Great Lakes, I think they want to live here. So it's kind of nice to be able to bring this and tout our area that we have as good a connectivity or better than you could even get down Minneapolis or any large community. So it, it's, it's exciting for us to be able to bring that. On the residential side, look at communications and how that's changed. How many people use Facebook or Zoom to talk over when we had COVID to keep in contact with your, your loved ones and your family? Um, the education with e-learning. I know the kids don't like this, but there are no more snow days because they can, <laughs> they can educate at home. Uh, you know, and then you have telehealth and enabling our residents to stay in their homes longer when they get elderly, to be able to communicate and get their medical assistance that they need. Entertainment, home monitoring, uh, you know, net, just things like even monitoring the temperature in your home and how that's changed and being able to check to make sure that all your stuff is there after a storm when you look out at your camera on your phone and can see that everything is still there you don't have trees down um, and again work from home enabling you to establish a career it doesn't matter where you live and you know this is the one that kind of baffles me 
you know, uh, Dale Thompson in our office bought a new washer and dryer, and the washer talks to the dryer to tell it how much load and how, how heavy it is so the dryer knows how long it should run to dry the clothes. I mean, this is crazy. I was listening to a radio, uh, to the radio the other day, and it was an advertising, advertisement for a new heating system in your house, and it updates by itself over the internet to get updates on the motherboard. And these are things that you would have never dreamed of, you know, uh, even five years ago, but they're all coming. And without a good broadband connection, they're meaningless. So our people can't enjoy that. So again, this is essential. Fiber to the premise, which is what we're investing in, is definitely the gold standard of bringing broadband. Its capabilities are they're not distance sensitive, and the, limit, the capabilities of it are endless. Uh, communities like this one are going to be able to boast that they have that type of connectivity, which is going to drive economic growth and prosperity, and we're so happy to be part of that. I want to take a, take a minute to thank again our partners. Uh, I told you this was a three-year process, and it was, but there's a lot of people, and this is where i got to make sure that I hit everybody. Because I, I mentioned the county, I mentioned the townships that are in our area, the Minnesota Office of Broadband that's here, DEED, and partnering with us on this, and our implementation partners, uh, Ripley's, who we're going to be using for the construction, which is a local company, which again means a lot of these dollars that we're spending uh, on the labor is coming right back into our county and being spent back here so it's circulating within our home area. The big deal. And then we have CNS that's also our implementation partner. So a big kudos to all of them for without them the project wouldn't be possible. And um, as always I want to thank our existing customers for giving us and trusting us with the opportunity to serve them. And I look forward to being able to extend that same level of commitment to these new connections that we're bringing forward. So with that, I thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. Now I'd like to introduce Bree Mackey. Bree was appointed by Governor Tim Walls in October of 2022 to serve as the new ex Executive Director of the Office of Broadband Development. Bree was the Senior Outreach Director and the State Broadband and Telecommunications Outreach Director for Minnesota U.S. Senator Tina Smith, and prior to that, for Senator Al Franken. She previously worked as an office administrator for Winona County Soil and Water Conservation District. Bree's strong roots to Southeast Minnesota provide a compass in her values and missions to provide all Minnesotans the tools, equity, and inclusion they need to achieve their personal and community goals. Bree currently resides in Winona County with her partner, Jeff. She has two adult children, Austin and daughter, Madeline, and in the true form of serving her community, and Minnesota. She's the chair of Lewiston Altura, Altura School Board and chair of the Southeast Service Cooperative. Welcome, Bree. Didn't know we were going to read that, so thank you for uh, embarrassing me, which does not happen very often. Um, well, thank you all for the opportunity to be here today to celebrate this incredible project. Uh, many of you know I started with the Office of Broadband in October and have uh, just thrown myself trying in the work to understand uh, the work that you all do and how I can better serve you and our office can better serve all of you. Uh, I was reading the stats on this project and I'm sure you all know these but I'm going to state them anyways um, because it's just it really is an incredible project and, and the amount of people that it's going to impact is truly important. Uh, over 276 miles of, of fiber that is going in, meeting the state's 2026 100 by 20 goals of unserved and underserved locations, and over 1,100 1, passings. This project is over $8 million, and I think it's really important to note that yes, the state has about three, over $3 million invested. You all as a community, um, and uh, organization and partnerships have put in over $5 million. And I think that's really uh, what this program really stands um, to help support um, that local knowledge and contribution and importance. We do know the pandemic has taught us a lot of things. Broadband is truly a lifeline that enables not only commerce, but health and education opportunities that otherwise may not be possible. 
Bringing broadband services to rural Otter Tail County enables telecommuting business owners, independent professionals to work from home as well as cultivate opportunities for their communities right here. Business ventures, telehealth, and e-learning are also uh, more reachable for more people. Think of all the students who will be in, able to enhance their learning opportunities, the economic development opportunities that will exist, access to medical records, online shopping, <laughs> as well as, I, you, you brought up a new one for me and I, I didn't even realize this was happening at our house, but um, the other thing you can now do is you can smoke your ribs or your pork butt while shopping at Menards, <laughs> which just happened in our house two weeks ago with our new um, Hitmaster smoking machine that we had to have. So there you go. I'm going to use that one. I, I didn't even think of it, but this is so exciting. Uh, anyways, overwhelming community support, support that you all have is very impressive and well noted. The Office of Broadband Development and my incredibly small but mighty team really value and appreciate and rank projects that have such strong community support very highly. And so know that um, that's one of the reasons that we were able to really strongly support this project. So uh, thank you for all of the partners who made this possible, the work. Um, I think also just recognizing that this is a project that shows the state of Minnesota, our legislators, um, what good use of our funding does and the true impact that it has and so the need to continue the border border grant investments um, and making sure they reach every Minnesota this is a model so thank you again for letting me be a small part of this I'm looking forward to seeing all of the opportunities that this community have because of this access and everything that happens because of this project so thank you thank you now I'd like to introduce Amy Baldwin. Amy is the Community Development Director with Otter Tail County. Holding this position since March of 2019, in this role Amy works to strengthen communities throughout the county by expanding housing opportunities, promoting business development, and fostering public-private partnerships to advance key strategic initiatives. Prior to joining Otter Tail County, she spent 15 years in community and economic development roles with various communities in Minnesota. Amy graduated from the University of North Dakota with a degree in Public Administration and holds a Master of Arts degree in Public Administration from Hamlin U University. She's a member of the Economic Development Association of Minnesota and serves on the Board of Directors for the Greater Minnesota Partnership. Welcome, Amy. Eric and thank you for the opportunity to be here today and as uh, Eric shared my bio and what I do with Otter Tail County and it is around partnerships and this is just a great example of what time sometimes takes um, but perseverance and certainly not without the leadership of our policymakers. and I want to acknowledge uh, Commissioners Rognes and Mortensen who are here today as well as CDA board member uh, uh, Dave Ripley. So really um, appreciate the leadership that they provide to us to help um, build these partnerships and give us the opportunity to uh, really bring forward these opportunities that we can talk about today. So you know this investment in Otter Tail County uh, is tremendous. It'll serve our, our you know, over a thousand households, though I think Eric said we're up to uh, it's growing. The number of households is growing actually, which is great. That's a big priority for Otter Tail County as far as uh, how many will actually be served by this project. And uh, it's really a testament again of what we can do working together as uh, through the broadband providers, the townships who have been great partners on this and uh, been great to get to know them in my role uh, through this work as well. And certainly the state of Minnesota being a strong partner. This infrastructure will help move us into the future and, and when you look at the county's long range goals, this type of investment is uh, highly noted and is important for us to continue our vision into the future as a county. As was already noted, um, you know, this has taken a number of years, um, 
and as we think about how our residents will continue or be better served to uh, run their at-home businesses, the farm operations, to be able to work from home, whether that's on those snow days. And in uh, Fergus Falls School District, we, don't, we still have snow days, just so you all know. Um, that hasn't gone away, and my kids will tell you how long they're going to school this year because of that. Um, and we also have the smoker that Bree talked about, and we can check, uh, get those pellets fed as they're needed uh, remotely. Uh, so we a lot, lot of services that uh, we don't know that we need until we need them, right? <laughs> uh, you know, but again, this project will serve our residents with those speeds that they need to live the lives of the next generation and the demands of internet connectivity and uh, thinking about that into the future. And I mentioned that you know, we, we are supporting new housing growth, we have workforce challenges, we know we need more people here to fill those needs and knowing that they can confidently invest in a home, whether it's one of our existing residents looking to build a new home uh, in this region or a new resident coming to Ottertail County to make it their home, they'll know, they'll have the confidence that they'll have the speeds and reliability that they need to do those functions on a day-to-day -day basis. So we look forward to continuing to partner. There's still work to be done. This is a huge growth in, um, in the goal of trying to have all of our uh, county served by high-speed internet uh, through a fiber connection and we hope to get there soon but this is certainly a, a big step in the right direction so thank you again thank you Amy I'm gonna have to get a smoker <laughs> especially one that connects to the internet um, at this time we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to call up some names uh, for this, for the groundbreaking ceremony. So, uh